So this is part two on how to get an A in math, and today I'm going to talk to you about homework. That horrible word, homework, right? How much homework should you be doing? Well, if you have an hour class, you should probably be doing an hour of homework. Uh, some people can get away with a lot less homework because they just naturally pick up mathematics. I had a student one time that could just look at the book and had no problem doing anything, and that's not normal. Okay, so during the lesson, your teacher will do all kinds of examples on the board. And um, within the notes, you should have several examples. And if your teacher doesn't give you a lot of examples, the textbook often has a lot as well. So if the teacher, as the teacher is doing the home, the questions on the board, if you don't understand a step, you should be asking for clarification as this is happening. Don't wait till the end of the class. Put your hand up. Teachers don't mind questions. They want you to ask questions. If there's something that's not clear, it's probably not clear for half of the class as well. Or maybe a teacher just skipped a step because they expect you to know how to do something that maybe you've forgotten. There's no, no problem in asking questions for clarification of questions. Okay, don't be shy. There are no bad questions and you need to be your own advocate. The teacher can't tell if you don't understand something as well, um, unless you're making a really weird face, which might be hard with a mask on, but at least you could frown like, ooh, I don't know what you're doing. Okay, so when it comes time to do your homework or seat work, the first thing you need to do is go back and read over the lesson. Okay, read over the lesson of the teacher that you have in your notebook. Make sure you didn't make any mistakes. You understand what, you're, what you've written down because sometimes students write things and miss words. Um, make sure you um, understand what you've written and that it's clear. And then when you get to a question that the teacher did, an example, get another piece of paper, write out the question and try it. So, in effect, what you're doing is you have a complete solution beside you and you can see where you get stuck. So if there's a point in the question that isn't clear to you, you have a complete solution to follow and then you can make your um, changes to your question and then try it again. Try it until you can do it. Don't jump right into the homework because the homework questions don't have complete solutions, right? They generally just in the back of the book tell you the answer is five or five X or something like that. So you, you, you need a complete solution. Now, again, like I said, in the textbook, they also have some complete solution examples and you can always write those out and try them as well. Um, if you're doing a word problem, you might have even more trouble because you might not understand what even the question is asking. So sometimes you can't even get through um, what, what the question is asking you to do, especially if English isn't your first language. Sometimes there's words that you don't understand and, and that's completely fine to, to ask right then and there. I have had students start homework and they're on 1A and they're, they're stuck already. And I'd say, well, did you go over the note first? Because I did a couple of examples similar to this. And a good teacher will do that. They will do examples from your homework to make sure that you are capable of completing the homework assignment. Okay, so um, while you're doing your homework, um, it's also important that you understand the layout of your textbook. Now, I know some of you don't have hard copies. You probably have online versions of a textbook, but um, the Nelson books that I use have uh, some very good sections in it at the end of each, each of your chapter sections. So let's say 4.1 at the back of that, it'll have a whole section called key points or things you need to know, or um, I think it's called key points, but it has everything like the short term, it's like Cole's notes for the whole chapter. So read over those and make sure that you've understood it. And that way, um, if not, you can go back into your your um, textbook to find out, or your notes, I mean, to, to figure out what you didn't understand. Now also, 
it's a good idea if you have a hard copy to put a ruler or a piece of paper where the answers are in the back of the book because you want to be checking to make sure you're getting the right answers, right? You flip back, make a little check mark beside the one that you do that you get right. If there's ones you get wrong, put a question mark or an asterisk beside it so that when time comes in uh, your class the next day, the teacher asks if you had any problems with the homework, you can readily identify the ones that you want to have answered and make sure you put up your hand and ask for the questions that you didn't get. Okay, so um, sometimes students say, I understood everything really well. I did all the homework and I still didn't get a good mark. What is wrong? What didn't I do right? And the problem is that um, some students are confusing memorizing with understanding. So you need to understand the intricacies of a question so that you um, you can repeat it on a test. I know it sounds really, um, really bad to think that you have to memorize stuff or that, you know, math is all about process, right? There's an algorithm. You need to follow it to do it right. So your brain works like this, right? Let's say you went to a new city in Europe you've never been to before. How lovely would that be? And you want to go to the museum from your hotel and you don't have your phone with Google Apps on it. OK, you don't have Google Maps. And um, so you step out of the hotel and you ask the doorman which way to the museum. They say turn right. So you go down the road and and um, then you have to ask someone else, which way do I go to the museum? And maybe ask two or three people on the way and finally you're there. Now, say the second time you go to the museum because you really liked it, uh, it's a little easier for you to find your way there. And maybe the third time you've even found a shortcut. So this is the same way that your brain is working when you're doing your homework, right? This is what's happening. You're building little pathways in your brain to make it easier. And the more you practice, the easier it will become. That's why I say you should be doing about an hour of homework for an hour lesson. It's the same thing as if you decided to play basketball. If I gave you a basket and you went to the net and you threw it and it went in, does that mean that every time you throw the basket, it's going to go in? Well, absolutely not. Or, you know, you'd be playing on some Olympic team somewhere. So make sure that you do the homework. Um, I usually tell my students to do every other question. If you're struggling, do more. Um, and that way, it's a good thing for you to, um, to get a grasp of it, to make sure you do a lot of questions. Okay, so once you've done your homework, um, the next thing you need to know is, how do I ask for help from my teacher? Don't go up to the teacher and say, um, I didn't understand anything in this class. Because that's not possible that you didn't understand anything, unless you've been away for a week. So... Um, show the teacher what you've done, like get to a certain point, try something and say, I get to here, but after this, I'm stuck. Can you help me? Like, what's the next step? You should be able to at least start a question unless, again, like I said, it's something you completely did not understand the instructions for. Um, the same holds true if you miss a class. I don't know how many times I've had students come in and say, uh, miss, did I miss anything uh, when I was away yesterday? And I would always answer with, um, no, of course not, Sally. We never do anything when you're not here. Of course, of course you missed something. You missed a 45-minute lesson. Um, a better question would be, miss, what, did, what sections in the textbook did I miss while I was away? so I can read up and try to understand it before I ask you for help. Because sometimes you can figure it out on your own, especially if you go to my YouTube channel and you say, oh, I'm looking for functions 4.2, which was covered by my teacher. You can go over it and then you can go back and ask for help. So of course, there's always something that you're going to miss and that you need to come back to. Um, it is your responsibility to get caught up when you're away. It's not the teacher's responsibility to, to teach you a 40-minute lesson. Um, 
and most likely your teacher won't have 40 minutes to help you. They might have 10 or 15 minutes during their, their lunch break. Okay, so make sure that you, you do the work too, that you're doing your part to make sure that you understand what is going on in the classroom. Teachers want to see that you're trying. Okay, they want to see you try. They don't want you, they're not there to spoon feed you and um, they'd rather help you when you reach a block in the road or you turn the wrong way. Okay, so that's, that's dealing with homework. Make sure, again, in summary, read over the lesson that you did. Stop and do some examples that your teacher has given you. Try some examples in the textbook and then go to the homework. You shouldn't have any problem if you do that. Thanks for watching.